I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. Welcome to part three of our cable class knit along. In this episode, we are gonna be making the off the rails towel. This towel is inspired by horizontal cables made with lateral braids and lateral braid crosses, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So I designed this pattern with my husband in mind. As all knitters know, when we get requests from family members, we have to dive in, our brain starts clicking, and we have to make something for them. My husband is bald. He loses beanies all the time because he gets cold, then hot, then cold, then hot, and he takes them off all the time. He's like, I wish I just had something. And I was like, hey, I can do this. So I said, let's, let's make you a cowl. Let's make it a little masculine, maybe a drawstring and a hem. And then I got to play around with the design of it. But my first choice was, okay, let's, this is going to be more on the masculine side. Let's find some yarn. And so I found the Cascade Wave in this more of a masculine color. But guess what, guys? This is not just for the men in our lives. We can also enjoy it ourselves. We have some other colors. It looks great for both male or female. Um, just be aware that you know when you're looking at patterns, don't get stuck because, oh, this is a boy pattern because it's in a masculine color. Try thinking of it in another color and seeing, hey, this could be for a girl or a boy. So that's what I did with these. We made two of them, one in a more masculine color and one in more of a rainbow. This is Juniper Moon Cumulus Rainbow, and the color choice here is Aurora Borealis. <laughs> Tongue twister there, but uh, just beautiful colors and, it, and uh, beautiful texture to the yarn. This is a cotton yarn. Let me see what percentage. 94% cotton and 6% nylon. So it's very soft and pliable and uh, a dream to work with. And then our Cascade 220 Wave is 100% superwash wool. So both of these projects can be washed. So yay, that's exciting. You could use double pointed needles for this project if you're really comfortable with them. Because we're gonna be working in this horizontal cable, there's some manipulation and there's a lot of stitch markers involved. It might get a little frustrating. So I would suggest trying out with a 16 to 24 inch cord circular needle. Um, lots of stitch markers, I just said. Um, I used these Clover soft ring markers because there is a lot of stitch markers in this project to keep us on track for our cables. These are pliable, they move along, they feel good in my hands. So that's why I chose these and I would highly recommend them. Uh, then also a row counter because we need to keep track of what row we're on. Uh, Tape measure, as always, scissors, tapestry needle, uh, the double pointed needles for the I cord at the end, and scissors. Those are our basic supplies that we'll need to work on this project. We'll use a size G crochet hook to make our provisional crochet cast on. Let's get started. On my little sample here, I've gone ahead and cast on using the provisional crochet cast on, and we have a stitch support video that we'll put a link up there. It's also in episode one, so if you want to go back there and review how I did that, very easy. Then I went ahead and worked in stockinette in the round, which is knit every stitch all the way around. So on my little sample here, I um, used floats so that I could get down to business and show you how we do all this. So I went ahead and knit in the round. I've got uh, 10 rows here. The pattern, which is available at onebighappy.com. We have kits available with the pattern and the yarn, but in the pattern, it'll tell you how many um, rounds you need to knit. So we'll go ahead and knit that. We have this nice little piece here. Now I'm going to show you how to join this together to make the hem at the very beginning. Now on our cast on, we made it so we can very easily unzip this and pick up those stitches. And I want to show you what that looks like and how we do that. We're going to use a second needle. Now you can use any size needle you want that is smaller than the size needle that we're knitting with. And this is a US size nine, so anything smaller. I'm using a US size two because I found I like the extra space as I'm working along. So I'm going to pull this out and it's going to release those stitches. They're going to come right out, That's unzipping. I'm going to do that until I get to where I can see this first stitch right there. And I'm gonna slide that onto my other needle. See, I've got a different needle here. And then we'll continue. 
go to the next one. There we go. Had it a little wrapped around there. And one at a time. And I just like doing this one at a time. You could like go through and weave them through and then pull it out. I just like to make sure I'm getting each one on there the way that it needs to be. I'm not splitting any. Now sometimes you will have a little bit of a split yarn, but just go ahead and clip your waist yarn and keep going. It's okay. But I'm going slow, picking these stitches up onto my second needle. Because we are making the hemmed edge. And I want to show you what that looks like. I'll pause for a second here. And this is the hem edge. See how nice and pretty that is? That's what we're doing here by doing the provisional cast on, the provisional crochet cast on, and then picking up these stitches. We're going to combine this together to make that. And I'll show you how we do that. Now, as I'm coming along here and I'm pulling my waist yarn out, I put my needle in first, pull the yarn out. But what happens if I kind of do that? Well, immediately I'm going to pinch underneath here to make sure that doesn't drop out and then just slide my needle right through there. So don't worry about that. And because you have just cast on and only knit a few rounds, if you do get lost in it, you could just always start right over. You're at the very beginning. But I'm just going to slide through there. And I do want to show you this last one it will look a little weird because on the last one, your scrap yarn or waist yarn is actually going through the center. So you just slide that on your needle and then just pull the yarn out all the way. So these are my active stitches. These are the ones where I cast on and slipped onto the second needle. What I want to do is fold this up and join these together. Now you'll be knitting in the round, yours will be a tube, mine's just a sample where I'm floating the stitches so it looks just a tiny bit different, but the steps are the same. I'm going to line these two next to each other, get my yarn under control here. Okay, so your active yarn will be over here and you will slide your needle through the first stitch on the front needle and the first stitch on the back needle and you'll knit those two together just like that. It's very similar to a three needle bind off except for we're not going to do the bind off stitch. We're just going to knit the first stitch on each needle together. One stitch from one needle, one stitch from the other and just like that. And then slide them both off. So I put my needle in here in the front, put my needle through the stitch on the front needle, put my needle through the stitch on the back needle and knit those together. And I'll go all the way around combining those and that will give me this nice rounded hem. Just like that. So continue knitting and stockinette and then when you're ready for the horizontal cable I'll show you how to make it. Okay so on my sample here I have already worked one of the horizontal cables. We're working these horizontal cables using a lateral braid and a lateral braid cross. So I want to show you how we make this. On my little sample, this right here is the beginning of my round. So this is round one of the lateral braid pattern. To work this, the first thing we need to do is increase one stitch. Um, as we go along, I want to show you where my stitch markers are through each section so that you'll know where to put your stitch markers in on this first round. I've already got mine in here just to remind me to tell you that's where it goes. <laughs> Four stitches are what's on my needle at this time between my um, stitch marker. I need that to be five and I'm going to increase one stitch by simply just doing a knitted cast on and that's where, let me show you that again, that's where you knit into the first stitch and then slide it right back on. And so now I have five stitches in this first section. This is what I'm going to work on first. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our stitches from going up and down to side by side. So going from vertical to horizontal. And to do this, we're going to swing back around and we're going to this stitch right here, the second stitch on the left needle, we're going to knit into the back loop. 
We're leaving that stitch on there right now. Now we're gonna knit into the first stitch like normal and then we'll slide both of those off. How we get it to lay down sideways is I'm sliding that stitch from my right needle back to my left needle. And you can already see here how it's going to the side, how it's laying horizontal. Now I'm gonna repeat that step again, coming from behind, going into the back loop of the second stitch on the left needle, knitting it, leaving it on the needle, then knitting into the first stitch. At that point, both of those come off. Now I slide this stitch from the right to the left needle and I repeat that process again. Just like that. On round one of the lateral braid cross pattern, you will do that all the way around. But as I said, we're gonna set up stitch markers every five stitches. So I'm gonna go through here, work that process one more time And as I count, I have, this is my beginning of the round marker. I have one, two, three, four, five. I need to slip this stitch back over to the other needle to work that again, but I have a stitch marker right here. The solution to that is I pull my stitch marker off for just a second. I slide this stitch over. I work through the back loop, through the front loop, slide off and then I slide that back. Now, from my beginning of the round marker, I have five stitches. I slide my stitch marker back on, and I'm ready to work again in this next st section. You want five stitches between each of the markers at this point. So now I've come to the next stitch marker. I have five stitches over here. I need to move this stitch back over here to work that one but I can't because there's a stitch marker there. So I keep this here, I slide the stitch marker off, slide that stitch back, and then I'm gonna work this stitch, slide it back. Now I've finished that process, I have five stitches back over here and I'll slide my stitch marker back on. So I'll continue doing this all the way around until I get back to my beginning of the round marker and then I'm going to show you how we go to round two and how we transition upwards. So I finished round one. Let's take a look. See these stitches? This is a lateral braid. Simple. If you want to keep making those go sideways, you just keep going and going and going. But if you want to twist them, I'll show you how. This is where the magic happens. This is where we're going to twist those stitches and it's a transition between round one and round two. It's kind of worked together at this point. This is the last stitch, and as always, we're gonna slide that over to the left needle. Then I'm gonna take my right needle and I'm gonna come underneath the legs of this first stitch here, just like that. Then up through that stitch that I just transferred over to the left needle, and I'm gonna tug on my tail here, or tug on my active yarn, and pop it right through there. And then put it right back on the needle. So I have essentially gone under that stitch, brought the yarn through, brought that stitch through, and twisted it. So cables are rearranging your stitches and working them as normal. I've just rearranged that by sliding it through that stitch. Then I'm gonna go back to knit through the back loop, knit through the front loop, slide both of those stitches off, then slide this back, and then put my stitch marker back on. And it's, it takes another round to really see this twist, and I'll show you on the finished, this is the twist right through here. Here's the first one, and then on round three, we'll do it again, and there's the third one. This is what we're doing by sliding that stitch underneath. It's twisting those and causing this little cable right there. So the reason why we have so many stitch markers is we do that every five stitches, so you continue on until you get to your next stitch marker, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna knit through the back loop, knit through the front loop, slide both of those off, then slide from right to left. And be sure when you come around that you're, you're not going this way through the two stitches, you wanna come around the back and knit into the back loop. 
and then knit through the front loop and slide it off. The back loop, knit through the front loop, slide it off. So you see here, this is round one, this is round two, and they're already showing that little twist there. As I keep going, it's going to lay on top of the other. I'm to my stitch marker. I'm going to slide my stitch marker off. I'm going to take this first stitch on the right needle, slide it over to the left needle. Then I'm going to take, follow this line down to this stitch right here. See how that's horizontal right there? I'm going to take my right needle and go underneath the two legs of that stitch, up through the stitch that's on the needle, pull and pop it through. And don't be afraid to use your thumb and index finger of your left hand to help maneuver like you do when you're crocheting. Don't be afraid to use that to manipulate the fabric. It doesn't have to stay on your needle. You can use that. So once you finish that, slide the stitch from your right needle to your left needle. Don't forget to put your stitch marker on. Go back and double count. You've got five stitches between the two and you're ready to continue on. You'll do this all the way around round two until you get back to your beginning of the round stitch marker. I've just finished round two. Now we're going to transition to round three. I'm at the beginning of round stitch marker. I'm going to slide that off. Go ahead and slide this first stitch to the, from the right needle to the left needle. And I'm looking down here at my twisted stitches. And I'm going to go through this one right here that's the one I twisted. And the way to tell that is I'm looking straight down from here and I see this one going here and that one already starting to lay over. So this is the one I want to go through right here. Take my right needle, slide through there, through that stitch at the top, tighten it and bring it through, slide it back on. And then back to knitting through the back loop, knitting through the front loop, slide it over, return the marker. Then I'll go work until I get to the next marker. And it looks a little bit different on from here on out. That first one underneath of the stitch marker looks different than all the rest because that's where you're bumping up. You know, when you work in the round, you're working in a spiral and that's where it jumps up or jogs up to the next. So it does look a little bit different. I wanted to show you what that looks like, but now I'll show you, I'll work to the next stitch marker and show you what it looks like for the rest of them. This is also one of those projects that you don't want to be having some little afternoon wine or at a knit group or something like that, because this is one where you kind of have to focus on each stitch as you go along just for th these three rounds, then you're back to stocking that again. Then you can party. Okay, here is this last one. Slide that stitch marker off. Slide this stitch from the right needle to the left needle. Then follow this down and see where that twists. It's starting, twisting, laying back down. So I'm going to go through this one right here. I want to get both legs of that stitch. Oop, I split my yarn. That's okay. Got both legs of those sti that stitch. Tighten and then bring it through. Slide it back on and go ahead and work it like normal. Just like that. Slide it back and return my stitch marker. Now, as you move along here, this is going to lay back down and those will twist and it'll look just like this right here and right here. Continue round three all the way. And then I will show you what happens just one little tiny step at the end of round three to even everything back out so you can go into stockinette. So let me work up to there and then I'll show you that and we'll be done with the horizontal cable. I've finished working all of round three. There's just one little step left. Remember at the beginning of round one where I increased one by doing an, a knitted cast on by one stitch? 
Well, now I need to get back to my original stitch count, and I'm going to do this by combining the last stitch of round three with the first stitch after my beginning of the round stitch marker, and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. We're going to slide this stitch over here. This is the last stitch worked on round three. I'm going to knit it together with the first stitch on my left needle and pop my stitch marker on. Now I'm ready to go back to stockinette and that's going to finish and close up. When I start knitting in stockinette, that closes up that cable twist right there on the end. As you work around in your stockinette, you'll see it, it'll lay back down because remember, we're working in a spiral and we work in the, in the round. So by bringing it in and connecting it to that other stitch, it just ends it and it tucks right down underneath of that twist in the horizontal cable. So that's how we make the horizontal cable using the lateral braid and the lateral braid cross. Go ahead and finish out the pattern, work your repeats, and then I'll show you how we finish up by making a hem, binding off, and adding a drawstring. So once you've finished the lateral braid and you've worked it in your stockinette and you've finished and you're ready to start the hem, which is the final casing to finish off your cowl, I want to show you some of the steps that I used to work this out. First, I want to kind of secure the stitches that I'm going to bind together to finish it off at the very end. And by doing that, I'm going to slide another needle through the purl stitches on the back side of my work to kind of hold that area. Now this information and where to put this in is listed in your pattern. So feel free to refer back there exactly where we're putting this in. But I want to show you what it looks like when you put it in. And this is my sample. I'm floating. To, yours will be a tube. Mine is done like this so I can really show you. When you turn your work over, and let's say this, your beginning of the uh, round marker would be like right here. Come in under this pearl bump right here, just like that. And then, and I'm using a size two needle, so it's way smaller than my work, just so I can really dive in there and pick those up and have the room to move around. Okay, I'm sliding onto my secondary needle, just like that. Now, if you find that you're having difficulty just doing this like I am right here, you can like pick up a double pointed needle or the other side of your circular needle, pop it up, and then slide it on like that. If that works better for you, use your tools, it's fine. Um, the main goal is to get all of these pearl bumps onto the secondary needle. And whatever works, like, you can see here, I'm going through there this way, sliding it on there. Go all the way around, and then we're just gonna let this cord hang out and continue working. Uh, we'll put in the eyelet for the hole, and I'll show you how to do that. Continue working. We won't come back to this needle until the very end. So now we're ready to put in the eyelets. This is where the drawstring is going to go through. So as you see here, there's like this indention. That's where we put in the smaller needle, and we'll come back to that. Then we have these eyelet holes right here. This is where the uh, eye cord or drawstring is going to go through, but we have to create that, and I want to show you how we make that. I'm at the beginning of my round on my little sample here. We're going to knit one, yarn over, and then knit two together. So the yarn over adds a stitch, the knit two together takes away a stitch, but when I knit on the next round, it leaves a hole there which is perfect, that's what we want. You'll go ahead and continue all the way around and then you'll do that same step right before you get to the stitch marker at the end of your round so that you have the two holes. Then you'll continue back into stockinette, go on until the pattern tells you that it's time to bind off and we're gonna do a three needle bind off and I'll show you on my little sample here how we do that. So on my sample here, I have my smaller needle and I am um, floating to give you the sample here. Yours will be the tube, yours will be the size of the real cowl, but I want to show you how we're going to work these two stitches together. It's very similar to what we did in the beginning when we did that hem stitch, only this time as we do that we're going to bind off as well. So I put the two needles together, 
make sure I grab the right one and don't pull the wrong one. <laughs> Put needle in to the stitch on the front. Bring this one up here that has the pearl bumps in it and slide my needle into there and then knit those two together. Slide them both off the needle. Do that again. So one from this needle, one from this needle. Knit those two together. And then a bind off, which is basically coming over here, picking the first stitch, lifting it up and over. I'll show you that again. Slide my needle into the stitch on the front needle. Slide it into the stitch on the back needle. Knit those two together, slide them off, pick up the first stitch, lift it up and over. You'll do that all the way around and that will make that beautiful bind off. So now I want to show you how to make an I-cord. And what is an I-cord? Well, basically it's a really long tube. You cast on four stitches and you just keep knitting round and around because remember when we're knitting in the round, we're knitting a spiral, we build this tube up. Super simple, it's a very small thing, but it's great for drawstrings, um, hair bows, decorative things. I'm going to show you how to make an I-cord. First, we're going to start off with a slip knot. I'm going to slide that on my needle, and I'm going to cast on four stitches. Now, you can use whatever cast on method you prefer. It doesn't really matter for this. We just need to get those four stitches on our double pointed needle. And the reason why we're using a double pointed needle is because once we get those stitches cast on, we're going to slide it to the other side and then knit again. We're not going back and forth like we were knitting flat. We're actually knitting in the round, but flat because as I go into this next needle, I'm pulling my yarn from the left side to the right side. And as I go, it just closes it up and it makes a little tiny, tiny, tiny circle. And that's called an I-cord. I'm going to go ahead and knit this row here. Slide it to the other side. Knit it again. And this goes super fast. Like you get you just sit down, get into a rhythm, and you can have this really long I cord in no time. I'm going to do a couple more here, and then I'll show you what it looks like as you pull on the tail, because that's kind of like the little magic. It looks a little flat until you get more going, and then it, you can see it curve in on itself and make it into a tube. You do one more. And for this project, you'll just continue making it for the length that you want. Um, probably about 30, 40 inches, whatever's comfortable for you. You're going to be wrapping it around um, your cowl and inside. And the pattern gives the exact measurements for how long I made mine. Um, so if you want to keep up there, you'll have plenty of yarn left over if you want to make it a little longer. Okay, here we go. So I've done a few rows. It looks a little flat, but when I pull on this and stretch it out, it just curls in on itself and you don't see that float that we had on the other side and it turns into an, a little tube. So that's how you make an I-cord. Now let me show you how, what we do with that. <laughs> so here is the finished I-cord and it's pretty stretchy too. If you've ever lost a drawstring in your sweatpants, how do you put it back in? Safety pin. So same here. I'm just going to put a safety pin into the tip of my I-cord and then thread it through. And you can feel it as you move it along. The safety pin gives you something to squeeze onto. I push it in, grab it with my thumb and my index finger, squish, squish, all the way around. So that is how you thread the I-cord into the cowl. I hope you enjoyed our cable class series. I hope you enjoyed the off the rails cowl with the horizontal cable. I had so much fun designing this for my husband and he absolutely loves it. When the kids came over, they loved it. I've made probably about four or five of these already. Um, it's, it's the hit this year in my family. But thank you for joining me. Don't forget you can get the kit with the pattern and the yarn at onebighappy.com. Check out our other cable classes. I just appreciate you being here and taking the time to learn some cabling techniques. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Join our Facebook group and share your projects along with us. But thanks again and happy knitting.